Yes. 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 You've got the excitement hat on. The pink hat. It means excitement. And I'm excited because finally a high quality budget case. Oh yes. Right. So you know here on the channel we've actually done a couple of case reviews. Quite a few actually. Um, and the budget ones. We talked about the Oversteel Iridium. That was quite a recent one. We also talked about the Ericle Mini GV2. These are budget cases. Right. And they always seem to have shortcomings in some way or another and end up just not being able to be recommended. But guys, I'm happy to be finding a case that actually is fantastic for budget builders. And it's just going to be my new recommendation going forward. It's the MSI Mag Forge 100R. And this thing is just brilliant. For what you're paying, it's pretty much untouchable. So what makes it so good? And that's what we're going to be finding out today. We're going to take a case tour. We're going to have a look around, see about the features of the case. We're going to be putting together a real PC build inside it because you can't review a PC case without actually putting a build in it. We're going to do a bit of testing on it as well to see what kind of um, performance we get with sort of a mid-range spec. And we're going to be able to ogle the good looks of this case as well because it's rare to get a case that is cheap, looks good, and has good performance. That's pretty fantastic. So let's get straight into that now with a case tour. So the glass panel is held on with four thumb screws. They're on pretty tight, so you're going to need a screwdriver to pop those off. And just be warned uh, that when you do undo all the screws, that glass has a tendency to fall off. So just make sure you've got a hand steady and ready to catch that glass so it doesn't smash. I mean, it shouldn't, it shouldn't smash. It's tempered glass, but you never know. The back panel as well, that will also come off. Probably just grab a screwdriver, get those two screws off and it'll pull off. Just like it would with any other standard case. And we can take a look about what's going on on the cable management side of the case. So there's a fair bit going on here. Um, and from first impressions, looks pretty nice. So what have we got? Starting in the bottom right corner, we've got our power supply uh, shroud area. Okay, so this case will not be any good for taking those giant power supplies. So you're thinking things like the Corsair HX series, those larger power supplies. You're not going to want those, but any sort of regular ATX size power supply is going to fit in here just fine. So, you know, I'm thinking things like Cooler Master MWE bronzes that I use all the time, Corsair CXs, Corsair TXs. These are all going to be great. When you're using things like Corsair RMs in this um, that have the slightly longer body, you might struggle for, for cable management room. Um, to the left of that though we have a couple of hard drive cages and these can take two and a half inch or three and a half inch drives and I actually really like how these are made they look very professionally done they slide in and out really easily and if you do want to have one of those larger power supplies you can actually remove the whole drive cage in its entirety by unscrewing it from the bottom of the case so there is an option there if you're not going to use any mechanical hard drives at all now just moving slightly up and to the right we can see that there is um, a, a space for a two and a half inch ssd mount as well or a two and a half inch hard drive so you've got a bit of extra room to mount something else there moving slightly to the left we have a three pin argb hub that's pretty cool right so this is a really cheap case. It comes with ARGB, so not just your standard uh, bog standard RGB. It uses an industry standard connector, which is three pin, and it comes with a hub so you can connect more three pin devices. This is going really, really well so far. It's also got a little plug in the top, which allows you to use the case LED button to change the LEDs if you don't have the appropriate connector on your motherboard. So whatever machine you put into the system, you're always going to be able to control that RGB, and you're also able to add any other industry standard ARGB three pin fans as well. So this is fantastic. Now looking for sort of cable management options in this case, and it's looking absolutely fine. You've got a little bit of depth here, enough to tuck your cables in between where you slide that panel on and the case itself. You've got loads of cable tie down points, which means we're gonna have no problem routing our cables and keeping them organized as well. Um, I think this is gonna work absolutely brilliantly. The cables you get with this one uh, are the standard cables you expect with a case, so USB 3, HD audio, um, and front panel. That's pretty much it. You don't really need much else. All right, so let's check out the proper interior of this case. So this would be the side that you can see through the glass panel, right? So the case, in terms of fans, comes with two on the front, which are ARGB fans. 
So this means obviously they're standard three pins. You've got two on the front, which is actually pretty nice considering it's a budget case. We've also got a plain black fan on the back of the case in the rear exhaust position to help push air out as well. Um, so you can either keep that one there or you can go out and get a standard three pin ARGB fan and have RGB at the front and the back. Now, the front, you will be able to put a liquid cooler in here. So in this one, we're actually putting a 360 mil liquid cooler in. So you mount your fans on the sort of towards the front and then you put your radiator on the inside of the case and that's going to work out brilliantly. You're still going to have the RGB coming through the front of the case, which is great. It'll also take a 280 mil or a 240 mil at the front as well. There is mounts at the top of the case for a 280 or a 240 mil liquid cooler. I'd probably go for 240 if I was putting in the top. I think 280 might be a bit of a squeeze. Um, but the nice thing about this case is there's plenty of room between the roof and where the first screws are for the motherboard, which means you're not going to get these problems with those super budget cases where your liquid cooler is going to be impacting on your RAM. So absolutely brilliant. Um, there's plenty of room in this case to support different motherboard types. So you've got ATX, MATX and ITX all supported um, so pretty much whatever motherboard you get you're going to be able to fit it in here. Um, one of the downsides though is that the standoffs which are the little sort of screws that have a hole in them so you can screw your motherboard into um, they're only pre-filled partially so if you're putting an ATX motherboard in here or one of the better MATX motherboards you're going to need to screw in some of those standoffs yourself and sadly the packet did not come with a standoff adapter which means you'd have to do it by hand which isn't as good as using the tool but it's a minor point and probably isn't going to affect the usage of the system overall and I'm really impressed with what we have on offer here. Right guys let's talk nitty gritty what can you actually fit inside this machine right so we already talked about the motherboard support ATX, MATX or MITX we also talked about the power supply as well this is 200 millimeters in the official spec but obviously if you remove that hard drive cage you can get those huge power supplies in if you really wanted to. Now, in terms of CPU cooler heights, this is the maximum sort of tower cooler that you're gonna be able to fit in this, 160 millimeters, which is absolutely great because it means that we can fit in things like the Vetro V5, Arctic Freezer 34, and those other kind of budget tower air coolers that typically you would put with a budget system. Now for the video card length, this is how long your graphics card can actually be and still fit in this case. The official spec says 330 millimeters, which accommodates pretty much all graphics cards that are currently available. There are a couple of exceptions, so make sure you're checking that before you go ahead with your build. But don't forget that if you're gonna put a liquid cooler in the front of this PC, you're gonna to have to subtract the thickness of that radiator from this uh, maximum video card length, because of course, you're not gonna be able to put your graphics card through your liquid cooler, are you? So you're gonna to have to make sure that you've accounted for that um, when you're putting your build together. So that kind of gives us a nice uh, tour of the case. And in terms of looks, I think it does look great. Um, it's got this very angular look and it's quite unique. And for the price of 45 pounds, which is absolutely brilliant, particularly in this day and age when the shipping container costs are really high and everything like that. I think this is gonna be a really nice choice. The airflow on the front panel here is a really nice addition because a lot of these cheap cases have very poor airflow. And I think this might be one to buck that trend. So this looks like a really great case for budget builders and talking of building like what good is talking about a case if we're not going to put a build together so let's run a quick build montage i'll see you on the other side and we'll have a discussion about the build process and of course how it performed see you then it's the devil on my shoulder Mistakes to keep me up And maybe I'm afraid that everything I've done has been a fluke And now I'm running out of luck Yeah, it's been a little rough here But I treat it like a friend Another person that I know won't stay forever Just a moment, just a momentary thing And when I wake up from the darkness There's a song that I will sing I love the peace I found The peace I found The peace I found the
my gosh, I, I'm actually blown away by how how well this turned out. This is a budget case, guys. £45, and we're getting these kind of looks. Um, I'm, ab I'm stunned. I'm absolutely stunned. It looks brilliant. So all of the RGB, all links together, and thanks to using industry standard connectors and not this proprietary rubbish it means that all of the rgb in the system can all link together despite being from different brands and it just looks absolutely amazing we've got cooler master rgb on the front we've got the two rgb fans that came with the case on on the top those are msi and the back fan is an antec but they all sync together beautifully and that's the amazing thing about not using proprietary connectors but enough about that the case itself looks absolutely gorgeous we've got great airflow coming through the front uh, the whole system is illuminated it's gorgeous looks amazing but how did we do in some testing so let's start off with some temperature testing now um, we're going to use prime 95 to test the cpu we're going to use occt to test the video card run these tests together at the same time to get the maximum heat uh, pushed through the system. Now, if you've not seen the channel before, our testing, we're not super rigorous. So we're not like Gamers Nexus, we're not like Hardware Unbox, where everything is super tightly controlled. This is more of a realistic scenario most people are actually going to be uh, engaging with their PCs in. So CPU-wise, our maximum temperature after 30 minutes of Prime 95, 68 degrees C. Then we use a very unscientific term, the equilibrium temperature, which ignores the really big spikes and just tells us about sort of a plateau temperature that we've had throughout the testing. And that was 62 degrees, um, which is really, really nice and cool, particularly for Prime 95, which is an unrealistic load that you never really use on your gaming PC. Now, the video card temperature is next, uh, and we basically just loop this benchmark OCCT, run it for 30 minutes, um, same time as Prime 95, our max temperature 73 degrees Celsius. Now, if you don't know much about GPU temperatures, that's actually pretty good. So anything under 80 is considered acceptable. Once you start going above 80 degrees under these stress test conditions, uh, it indicates that maybe the cooler on the video card isn't very good or you haven't got very good airflow. And the sequela of that is that if you're playing games, it can throttle, it can slow down because of those high temperatures. But 73 degrees gives us plenty of breathing room here, um, so there's absolutely no problems in that regard whatsoever. So onto some gaming, uh, and let's start with a bit of Apex Legends. And you can see actually we're doing awesome here. So, you know, we're on an RTX 3060 based system today. Um, and we're getting well over 144 FPS, and this is at 1440p resolution on the high settings. So, you know, I'm very happy with the performance here. And you can see those temperatures are actually much cooler than we had in the stress test. You know, 68 degrees on the video card, 50, you know, low 50s on the CPU. That's absolutely brilliant. What about a bit of Fortnite? That's another game that's very popular, especially with the young kids. So we're getting around 300 FPS in Fortnite average, and that's pretty good. Again, 1440p, but this is more on the low settings with epic draw distance because it's a bit more competitive, you know, you get that faster latency and that kind of thing. Now, onto some more traditional benchmarky type games. So let's talk about Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is running at 1440p, DLSS off, and on the highest settings, our average FPS was 102, which is pretty nice indeed for a 1440p AAA title. I'd say I'm pretty happy with that. Heaven Benchmark is uh, one of the old stalwarts of PC testing. Um, it's really good for consistency. We're running on the extreme preset, FPS average 180.6 with a score of 4550. Um, yeah, this is pretty much exactly what you expect from a 5600X and RTX 3060 system, around sort of mid 4000s. Absolutely bang on. So we can safely say that this case is not holding back this build in any way whatsoever. In fact, it's doing a really great job of keeping all the components cool. So, conclusion time should you buy this case, the MSI Mag Forge 100R? Yes. Absolutely yes. I love this. This is absolutely fantastic. It's been so long since we've had a budget case that delivers in pretty much every area. So obviously this isn't one of those really big cases, you know, we're going to be able to get your custom liquid cooling stuff in, but it's not aimed at that market whatsoever. And for the people that this is for, this £45 case is pretty much unbeatable. I'm calling this the new standard to beat. Um, there's no point buying a £30 case when you can get this one for just £15 more and have just an infinitely better build quality infinitely better quality i think this is a really great case um, and just kudos to msi for putting out such a great product at such a great price point but what did you guys think comment below i really love engaging with you guys knowing your thoughts on these builds and if you enjoyed this video perhaps you'd like to see a review of another budget case but unfortunately 
not such a good result for this one. The Oversteel Iridium, um, and there's a, a tile there for you to click on if you want to see that one. But otherwise, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. As always, below, um, it makes it makes it worth doing. I love chatting with you guys. I love hearing your thoughts and opinions. Subscribe, of course, to see us again. Ring the bell so you get our videos. And until next time, see you later.